With Nationals slowly ticking down, Galaxy Loop getting the choice restriction, and major decks like Anubismon, Melga X, and Mirage being clear choices, what are some other options to consider for Nationals? After some considerations and playtesting, Uko Rush is another contender. As always, I'll go over the card by card, the strengths, and the weaknesses. For combos, this deck is Rookie Rush, so in essence, I don't really need to talk about that part. This deck runs 5 level 2s, 42 level 3s, 5 option cards, and 3 tamers. Eggwise, I keep it simple. BT14 Coromon for a draw 1 when a card is removed from your opponent's security stack. And when Gigimon when you attack with a Digimon that has Geomon, Growmon, or Gallantmon in its name. Honestly, you could forego this egg altogether, mainly because your only target is the Promo Geomon. But for everything else, it 100% works assuming you can chip a security away. Unfortunately, no other red eggs work well for this draw power considering you don't digiball up into Greymons, have Digimon with 6000 DP or more, or run red tamers. As a result, these are the current two eggs I go with. But for level 3s, there's a slew of them for all the mentioned matchups that I had previously stated that are likely going to take nationals in 2023. Ukomon is one of the most popular staple rookies in a few decks. This white Digimon is capable of digivolving from any level 2, and on your turn once per turn when one of your Digimon moves up from the breeding area to the battle area, you may hatch a new egg in the breeding area, and then gain one memory. This includes promoting itself, and can set up your attackers fairly quickly. Excluding Floodgates from the red rookies, there's Monodromon for its cheap on blade cost, and Geomon for its draw capability when you attack. Paired with your eggs, you potentially have ways to draw two cards. Belukomon can literally be anything, just a two-cost Digimon with 5000 DP. Doesn't matter the color, but if you did red, you might be inclined to Digivolve with it in the raids. But what about everything else? When it comes to tackling the meta contenders, this is where Floodgates play a key role. And one must ask, what are the best options? When it comes to red, red has a slew of Floodgates. Gaussmon plays the crucial role of preventing your opponent from reducing costs when Digivolving. This hits in particular the training option cards. Additional copies of this type of effect come in the form of Sayakomon and Cutemon. Solarmon prevents play cost reduction, rendering Digicross, Anubismon, and Death Xmon from getting played for cheaper costs. Again, other copies are in the form of Psychmon and Chikurimon. Gatsumon is one of the biggest MVPs in the deck, considering this is one particular way that will stop Anubismon cold. Unless they have a Digimon that can remove the Floodgate, this ultimately stops their combo from going off. No Digimon played means no secondary effect to delete a level 5 or lower Digimon. Additional backup for this is in the form of Poemon, though you could also use Pillowmon. And last but not least, Red is lacking in this type of Floodgate, but Memory Blockers. Madoki Betamon and Gazimon pull double time in the Melga matchup. Considering most Melga removal is impossible until after they go into their top end. Because of this, when they discard cards for their additional memory, that's a big fat no. Option card-wise, this deck runs 5. Two copies of Crimson Blaze for wider building boards in the case of D Brigade and Bloom Lordmon, preventing their effects from going off. There are a few options to consider for the last three slots. Magma Bomb, for a cost of 6, can delete your opponent's lowest level Digimon. Atomic Megaloblaster can deal with a slew of Digimon that add up to 10,000 DP, or one target at 10,000 DP or less or even Gaia Force for generic removal. Melga in general can't deal with any of these options because it would be deleted by card effect. But for Mirage Galgamon, you'll want cards like Magma Bomb or Gaia Force since they go into level 6s before going off. And finally, Tamers in the form of 3 copies of Lu Owada. This Tamer has an on-play effect that lets you move one level 3 or higher Digimon from the breeding area to your battle area. Your turn, when one of your Digimon moves from the breeding area to the battle area, Suspend this Tamer to gain one memory. Effectively, for two memory, you can move out a Digimon to the battle area for another attack. And that's it! Uka Rush is honestly very simple, and has a lot of tools to counter elements of other decks. Against Anubis, you want to prioritize stopping their Digimon from being played, because Anubismon's effects can't trigger. However, this is where Anubis decks have gotten a little cheeky and are running tech cards like May Crackmon. Against Metal Garurumon X, you'll prioritize memory blockers to prevent your opponent from gaining memory when they discard their Garurumon X, and Digivolving reducing blockers to stop their use of training options. But one thing that this deck lacks completely are security bombs. Melga players prioritize their consistency pieces over bombs like other decks, meaning you'll either hit a Digimon, X Anybody, or a Tamer. Generally speaking, 
What are your thoughts on Uko Rush as an option for Nationals? Do you think this deck will see some representation? Or do you think it'll wait on the sidelines, eager for some additional support in BT15? Let me know your thoughts, because Nationals is soon. This is Digipanda, logging out.